Hey everyone, so I had a crazy idea and decided to test it out. Could I game and stream on an extremely low-end PC using Google Stadia? Turns out I can, I did, and I actually enjoyed it. This means that the barrier to entry for live streaming just got a lot lower. If you want to stream but you're worried about your hardware being too low-end, worry no more. Of course you'll need to manage your expectations. It won't be the best looking stream ever, but it's going to be a lot better than you probably think it will be. For this video I decided to play Metro Exodus for the sample gameplay footage. I'll be switching between gameplay from the Twitch livestream and gameplay I recorded locally at the same time using a second PC. Then at the end, I'll show them side by side for better comparison. First, let's go over the sub $200 PC in question. It's actually an Odroid H2 that comes with an Intel Celeron J4105, which is a quad core CPU. The GPU is an Intel UHD 600 integrated graphics processor. I threw in 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gig NVMe M.2 drive, but since the Odroid is out of stock due to CPU shortages, the actual build itself isn't important. The whole point of this video is to illustrate that these days, you don't need a powerful computer if you want to play games and stream at the same time, thanks to cloud gaming services. If you do care about the hardware though, there's a link in the description with the Google Docs that outlines the exact hardware I'm using and the OBS settings. For completeness sake, I looked up a comparable system on eBay, but the best I could find was a Dell Optiplex 3050 that has the 7th gen Intel i3 CPU in it. The i3 is roughly double the performance of the Celeron J4105. The Dell was just shy of $175 shipped, but again, this video isn't about the specific hardware. It is just to show you how well low-end systems can handle gaming and streaming at the same time. Now, do you remember what I said about managing your expectations? Well, the first place you do that is with the stream settings. The poor little integrated graphics processor couldn't handle more than 720p at 30 FPS, but that's not bad considering that it was being used to render the scene in OBS and encode the stream. I was using Intel's QuickSync video, which a lot of people scoff at, but I've been impressed with every time I've used it. So here's the two videos of me playing Metro Exodus side by side. On the left is the Twitch stream, which I downloaded directly from Twitch, so that video is exactly what the viewers were seeing on their screens. On the right is a recording I took using a capture card, so that is exactly what I was seeing on my screen. Like I said, the stream itself was only at 720p, 30fps, so I had to scale it up to 1080p to fit with the recorded footage, which was 1080p, 60fps. I added the task manager to the overlay on the live stream to show the PC's resource utilization. You can see the CPU and GPU utilization are nearly always over 90%, but neither the actual gameplay or the stream are impacted in any way. As far as my experience with playing and streaming, it was basically identical to me using my gaming PC with the Ryzen 1700 and GTX 1080. I didn't notice any issues on my end, and actually played this game for over an hour live on stream over two different sessions. The only reason I stopped was so I can switch to GeForce Now to capture some gameplay and streaming footage for another video. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing that video also. I went back and watched the Twitch VOD to see how it looked from the viewer's perspective, and aside from the 30 FPS causing the video to be not as fluid as the 60 FPS recording, it wasn't bad, and when I was watching the stream live while I was playing the game, I cannot recall it being noticeable, so the jumpiness might be a result of Twitch's post-processing and how they handle keyframes. I wouldn't expect that quality from a professional streamer with thousands of dollars worth of hardware, but I wouldn't leave the stream because of the quality either. So what's my final verdict? Well, I'm extremely happy with the results. When I purchased my Odroid H2 many moons ago, people were discussing what kind of gaming they could expect, and the response was always met with laughs. How crazy it would be to go back in time and reply with, it runs Destiny 2 and Metro Exodus just fine at full quality and 1080p at 60fps. Oh, and you can stream on Switch also. Cloud gaming services like Google Stadia open up the world of PC gaming to a whole new group of people. Those who don't want to spend a lot upgrading their work or family desktops, or those who solely use a laptop. If you're a casual gamer on a budget, or new to PC gaming in general, Google Stadia is definitely a viable option if you find their gaming library enticing, that is. I've included links in the description to all the footage you're watching here, so you can download it and view it without YouTube's compression if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Peace out. That was fun.